Welcome back into Buccaneers Total Access brought to you by Advent Health. First half of the show we had head coach Todd Bowles. Now I'm so excited to be joined by outside linebacker coach George Edwards. Coach, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, and you know, I said to you before this, you drew the short stick having to come on after that game. I appreciate you still being willing to do it. And I imagine, uh, you know, in the days after a game like that, it is, it is tough uh, with the guys going over the film, all of that. Now that you have had a chance to look back at it a bit, what are some of the big picture takeaways from a game like that? Well, anytime a game gets to that point, I mean, you start looking at the things you were asked to do and you were asking the players to do, and you want to go back and make sure from a fundamental and technique standpoint that those things didn't come into play. And sometimes, I mean, in this league, through this journey, I mean, there are days that you just have bad days. And, you know, the circumstances of that game, I, I think we – you know, didn't get our best as far as, I don't think it was a lack of effort. I just think with the way that the game went, we didn't handle some of those situations properly. What did Denver's offense do well versus what was maybe some self-inflicted wounds? I, I think they ran the ball effectively against us and that we had a lot of missed tackles, which I think, you know, we can improve on. Uh, I think protection-wise, they went a lot, of, lot more seven-man protection, which they haven't shown that much. but. Uh, and a quarterback being able to scramble in the pocket and run and those kind of things were all things that were key to them keeping us off balance throughout the course of it in the certain situations in the game. I know, like you mentioned, you, you've been in this league a long time. You've been there for the highs and lows of a, a multiple different teams and situations. I know teams always like to say the 24-hour rule and then you put it behind them. But I look at games like the Lions and how much of a high that was and the kind of emotional high of that, of especially how last season ended. Did it feel like there was any emotional whiplash kind of coming out of that game and then now to this one and, and how you guys try to deal with that? Well, you know, it's, it's neat you ask that question because I get answered, you know, every week, well, you think we're ready to go, do you think? I, I mean, it's so hard to tell. Every game and situation is different. What you try to do is be consistent with the preparation, be uh, uh, very specific in what the expectation and what the standard is and hold guys to that. And then on Sunday, you know, every, like I said, every game, there's a lot of things you can control and there's things you can't control. So you got to do a good job of managing the things that you can't control. I think a lot of people ask Coach Bowles about things like getting the team ready or, you know, motivating them, things like that. I almost imagine that maybe you guys as position coaches have even more to do with things like that than a head coach. Of You guys are the ones that are really with particularly your players all the time. Do you feel like that is a part of the position coach's job is the mentality aspect or is it more of an X's and O's purely thing for you? No, it's definitely, you know, a part of it at the end of the day, but it, it's just like raising a kid. It takes a village. So, I mean, everybody's got to be on the same page and be speaking the same language. And I think Coach Bowles does an excellent job of getting that point across and it echoes down between all of us as position coaches. And how about for your group as outside linebackers in this game in particular, what stood out to you from their performances throughout for each of those guys? Well, we had two penalties that I wasn't planning on us having. That, I love uh, how you phrase that. I wasn't <laughs> planning on us having those. I like that. That kind of came out of it. And in, you know, critical situations and in games like that where everything gets magnitude that you're trying to, you know, come back with momentum and get those things done, it, it's critical. And then, you know, to have – you know, a chance to have a sack and not be able to get it, and then another chance to have a sack and miss him, and he scrambles for a first down. You know, those are things that, you know, you look at and look to improve upon from week to week. And then we're talking to outside linebacker coach George Edwards here. Um, how has it affected you guys? Your position group in particular has, has not been the one that has been the walking wounded like these others these last few weeks of where it was DBs and defensive linemen. But did those injuries affect – what your position group either could do or was asked to do in terms of that you're playing kind of alongside some different people than normal? Yeah, I, I mean, it's always good when you can keep everybody healthy and go, but injuries are part of it from week to week. The, and the thing you try to emphasize the players is that the standard's not going to change. Of course, it's a big difference when you've got Vita out and you got Kalaja out up front, especially in a pass rush game and those kind of things. But the guys we had in there, they were, a lot of them played the second half of, you know, when those guys were injured last week. So that's never an excuse. So it's the next man up mentality, and guys got to realize that, and they know that, and the expectation and the standard that we expect from week to week does not change. 
What are the things that you like about coaching alongside Coach Bowles, both from a scheme standpoint of what you like about it for your position and then also just what it's like to coach alongside him when you have highs like last week, when you have lows like this week? What are the things that stand out to you about a guy like him? Well, I, I think like anything else, he's pretty even keel with everything. And, that you know, the players can see that. And you have to be able to be even keel in this league because, like you said, there's natural highs and there's natural lows. But the expectation of what we are here together to try to get accomplished, you can't lose focus on that. And one bad game does not define you or your position group or your team. So our emphasis is, all right, what can we learn from this and go move forward and get better from it and keep encouraging our players that, hey, this is the way life is. It's no different than life. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be things you can control, things you can't control. But you got to make the most of it, and your mindset's got to be there to be able to move on from it and learn from it and put it in your rearview mirror. Are, you don't strike me as a yeller and screamer. Is that accurate? Uh, or have you been known to occasionally, and I just haven't witnessed it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not a big guy. I, I look at our job as, as we're teachers. There are things that emotionally do get involved in time where it requires that or it happens. So, you know, I, won't, I would never say never. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so for you, when you look at your room, do you feel like you have to approach each guy differently? Or do you, you have one kind of way of coaching that works in general? Or is it like, man, I, I got to coach each guy a little differently? Yeah, every, every person is different. So every player is different. And different guys are motivated by different things. Different guys have different abilities, what you ask them to do. So collectively, you know, like I said, as a, as a group, we set a standard for what it is that we want to go get accomplished. And then you hold everyone to that to that standard as you go as far as a preparation from week to week and what we expect from every opportunity we get out to go and play. And what are the biggest things expected of you guys specifically in Coach Bowl's scheme that I know there's some unique things, particularly for outside linebackers, where maybe a lot of times it's not something they've always been asked to do before. Yeah, I mean, schematically, we're very multiple, a lot of different, you know, combinations of players, a lot of combinations of of just different things to try to handle the things that offenses put out there against us each week. Uh, the thing that's unique about this was the, the skill set of the players in the room. They're asked to rush. They're asked to drop. I mean, they're asked to do a collective, you know, things that, you know, they have to be in tune to and be able to process those things within the different packages and be able to execute. So that makes it a lot of fun. I mean, to me as a coach, being able to, you know, have guys that physically are able to do that and then the mental aptitude to be able to adjust to it. I mean, we've had some rookies come in here and they really have never dropped before, you know, they've got in here and they come in, but they they realize their expectation and, you know, go to work at it and improve in those areas. So it's always fun to see them, you know, come in, start, learn, and then go from there. And, you know, seeing where a lot of them have come from and where they are now, you know, we just got to keep pressing the envelope. Is teaching them to drop the hardest thing typically to teach them? Some of them. I mean, they have the ability to do it. It's just that they don't have experience. And mm -hmm. that's what we always try to emphasize. You've got to become uncomfortable with being uncomfortable yeah. when you're asked to do things that you haven't been comfortable with. But they they all like the challenge. They accept it and they go to work each day. So that's that's been good. And then for you looking at Particularly Yaya, yeah, I feel like there was something that almost seemed like it clicked for him partway through last season. Is that how it felt to you guys? Yeah, I think with the multiples and the complexities of what we do defensively, it's a lot when mm -hmm. you're coming in. Depending on your background from college, you know, it's still a lot. It's a total different game in college and when those guys get to this league, just how offenses try to attack you and just the different landmarks as far as drops and just rush angles and all those things. So it is a process to do it, but uh, he embraced it. And like I said, he became very comfortable with being uncomfortable with a lot of things that we ask him to do, you know, from his first year coming in. Now it's like an old hat and he feels a lot more comfortable doing those things. But you got Chris Braswell, who's a rookie this year. And it's really the same thing. He's been asked to do a lot of things that he hadn't or hearing things for the first time. And then all of a sudden, you know, he's got to take those experiences and learn from them and continue to get better. With all those things you mentioned they have to learn, I feel like across the NFL we always hear this expectation of year one to year two jumps for players. Right. When it comes to outside linebackers, 
is that typical as well? And if so, in what areas specifically do you typically see the biggest jump? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think them being even more comfortable, it's not the first time that they've done something from year one to year two is the biggest thing. And especially when they come in, they're so concerned about what it is that they have to do from an assignment and alignment concept, uh, where now they can really focus on, okay, so how are teams trying to attack us? because they feel a little bit more comfortable with what we're asking them to do schematically, and it's not the first time that they've done it. And then going into camp this year, what did you think were your expectations of Yaya, the things that you thought, all right, this year, this is who I think he can be, this is what I want to see from him, as compared to even as well as he finished last year? Uh, I, I think you can see, you know, before the injury, he was really moving fast, and, uh, you know, the process has sped up for him. And he's always been a physical, heavy-handed player as far as the run game goes. And then just his, you know, get off and his pass rush and those things, he's really worked this offseason to diligently get better at that. You can just see his comfortability and being around the guys that he's working with. I mean, you know, just whether it's running games or running stunts or whatever that is, having a complete understanding of what we're asking him to do. Uh, he really now doesn't have to spend as long, you know, thinking about those things. He can just go out and react and play. What were your reactions when he got hurt in camp, when you saw him go down before you knew what it was going to mean? Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, until you know, I, I mean, I've learned just like with anything else, you kind of got to just wait and see mm -hmm. and then find out the time and those kind of things. The one thing you can always count on, yeah, yeah. He is going to give everything he's got to get back out there to be able to play, and he's going to exhaust every means to get better, to stay healthy, to work out, to be ready to go. So from that aspect of it, I had a deep sigh, and then I was like, okay, there is a sigh of relief that we'll get him back before the start of the season. Well, that's funny. My next question was going to be how he handled rehab, and it sounds yeah. like based on that, that with as, as best he possibly could. Yeah, I mean, he's going to attack everything for both to be able to get there and be accountable to his players and be able to be there for them. You, you can bank on that with everything from the time he spends training in the off season. I mean, he's here all the time. I mean, he's going to – it won't be because he didn't, you know, invest in himself and invest in that time to be available. All right, we're going to take a quick break here on Buccaneers Total Access, brought to you by Advent Health, talking to outside linebacker coach George Edwards. This is Buccaneers Radio. Welcome back into Buccaneers Total Access, brought to you by Advent Health. We are here with outside linebacker coach George Edwards. Uh, right before the break, we were talking about Yaya and coming back from injury. How do you feel like he has looked since coming back? Is he back to his full self that you mentioned he was prior to that or still working to be there? I, I think he's a lot more comfortable where he is right now. I think the first week out, you know, just on the ankle and moving and, you know, his timing of getting off on his rush and those kind of things, I think he was still feeling his way. But now I think he's completely back and feeling pretty good. And so for him, what are the biggest things that you're still working on with him to see him take that next step? I, I think just the, ordinary, the things that change from week to week from offense, that the way that they try to attack us from what we're asking him to do from an alignment and assignment, uh, his pass rush, still continuing to work on his pass rush and that aspect of it. But uh, you know, like I said, it, there's something every week that we try to get improved on. Uh, just, just from this past ball game, not chasing the down block and stepping across and taking on a flasher when it comes back. So there's always something. I mean, nobody's perfect. Nobody's going to play a perfect game each week. So we'll always have something we can improve upon. Are there things he can do thanks to his athleticism, size, physicality that, that other people can't. What is that like for you as a coach to have someone like him that is just this, I mean, it looks like this action figure walking down the side <laughs> of the hallway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really is. I mean, the power and explosion that he plays with, I mean, you look at his background where he was hand in the dirt, playing close, you know, from a three technique to a four eye on a tackle, to now he's out in space and being able to use his athleticism and his get off and his power, you can see the power and explosion. Out. Is, it, I mean, he really is a unique athlete. And you know, like I said, he trains to get the most out of his ability from day to day. What do you think is his best move at this point for a pass rush move? What's his, what's his best one, you think? Uh, if you ask me, I think the best thing he does is the long arm. I bet if you ask him, it's no. straight power. No, he said his long arm, actually. We had him on our show, and he oh, said this. You? So look at that. Okay. He's been listening to you. <laughs> he probably enjoys the power even more. Yeah, maybe. he does. And he, he did a great job of that last week. This week was not so much of a power rush game, but uh, 
you know, he's getting a lot of seven-man protection. They're starting to put a lot of tight ends over there to chip him and just working through the agitation of that right now. But yeah, that would told be that's irritating. a good thing. That's a part of it. You yeah, know? I can see how that would be irritating. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Joe tryon I feel like this season um, he's looked, you know, really great that he looks like even in some games that things aren't going well, this looked like it's been uh, a good start to the season for him, especially, you know, looking at some recent years and stuff. It looks like he's getting some production even when things aren't going great overall. What are the biggest things that – um, stand out to you that he's been doing well so far these these first few games. I, I really do think Joe his approach to it has really been strong this off season, you know, in preparation for it. But I, I just think his physicality coming off the ball and using his hands, using his length, I mean his athleticism and space and all those things. He's really grasped that and really is getting the most out of his ability with that right now. I mean pass rush wise he's been getting off the ball and not widening and, you know, those kind of things to get back down at the quarterback. So he's done a good job so far. What are the biggest things that you're still working on with him? Uh, I would say just with Joe, the big thing is being consistent with it, you, you know, where he doesn't change his plan of attack, you know, from one week to the next. I mean, I think showing consistently that he's going to be able to rush that way and play with that physicality, which he's, you know, has done. I thought he did it last year, but even more so this year, you can see from the start of it, it's in his mind that way and he's playing that way. What's sort of your idea of his, I don't know, potential ceiling still at this point of where is he at in terms of maxing out his abilities? Well, I never want to put a limitation on anybody that they can't continue to get better because I think we can all get better from day to day. The more that we learn, the better we're going to be, the more comfortable we are in the setting of what we're asked to do. But uh, I think Joe, with his athleticism, his speed, and his power, I, I think the sky's the limit for him. And then I know losing Shaq, from the team, both as a player and a leader, has to be quite a blow for, for you as a coach like that into the whole room. Um, when you knew he wasn't going to be coming back, what came to your mind of just the overall effect that this could have on your team and your room from, again, not just a production standpoint on the field, but as having a guy like that that's such a, a leader in the locker room? Yeah, there's no doubt. Anytime you have somebody that, number one, has the experience within this organization, within the system defensively, and he's got 10,000 reps at it. I, I mean, anytime you lose somebody with that kind of experience facing the different offenses and offensive coordinators from week to week and what he brought to the table with that, you, you're going to miss that in your room. But I think a lot of the guys that are back kind of took that personally. They're all, I mean, he's the guy that everybody's going to remain friends with for a lifetime. So just seeing him come at it and the way that he approached the work every day and how he got out, you know, the experience and the experience that he brought to the meeting room and all those things. I, I think even guys to this day still reach out to him, stay in contact with him from that aspect of it. But uh, uh, just a great guy to have in your meeting room. And just like I said, with the experience that he's had here and the experiences that he had within the system went a long way for us as a position group. And now, you know, we've got a lot of guys that doesn't, don't have as much experience in it. But like I said, we're learning from day to day. We're working through it from day to day. I think at, between Anthony Nelson and Joe, they probably have the most experience in the system. And, you know, using them as examples and, you know, just drawing on their experiences, I think, helped these young guys along. We're talking outside linebacker coach George Edwards. Um, have you specifically tried to ask anyone to step into that leadership void to fill it? Were you going to wait and see how people handled it? How, how do you approach that even as a, a coach in that moment? Yeah, you talk about it, you know, from the aspect of, okay, we, we lost a, a big voice in our room. And I think guys are coming into their own. I mean, every year is different from that aspect of it. And I think guys bring different things to the table. And just as they continue to grow, I think their voice continues to grow in the room. And, it, and a lot of it comes through their actions. I mean, it's going to come through their actions on the field, what they're able to do on Sundays, what they're able to do from day to day. As I said, this journey is a long journey. And you, what you display is not what you say. It's what you go out there and you do every day. Shaq was able to do that over a long period of time and sustain that competition at a long different over a period of time. So a lot of these guys are still, you know, working through that process of it. And I just, hey, we're going to take every day, learn, keep growing, and just keep continuing to get better. And I know for you guys, uh, while sack numbers aren't everything, they're one of your probably favorite numbers <laughs> no doubt. to have. Um, I know the number is probably not as high as you would like for it to be after three games. Tell me, I know sometimes sacks can be a pretty fluky thing 
but what to this point that is under your control do you feel like you guys haven't done as much as you'd like to see or what has been the reasoning behind maybe having a smaller number in that stat than you'd like at this point through three games? Well, I, I think the way the first three games have gone, we've hit the quarterback, we've pressured the quarterback, but we haven't finished on the quarterback. And that's the big thing that we're trying to do now is just continually work on finishing at the top of the rush on the quarterback. And like everything else, everything's tied together from a schematic standpoint to it, it takes everybody to be in those positions to get it. And just guys really, we've got to turn it on to in those critical situations, whether it's third down or, you know, second and long to where we get an opportunities to go rush that we've got to get the most out of those opportunities. What percentage of you evaluating your guys is, is sacks? Like how much of that is an indicator to you of how your guys are playing versus some other numbers and, and stats and other contributing factors to their game? Well, number one thing I always look at, are we affecting a quarterback? Are we making him throw it on time? Or are we making him get off the spot in the rush? I mean, those are as critical as anything. When you look at us situationally, well, it ends up being third down, whether we're pressuring or we're asked to drop, whatever those things are. I try to keep it in that perspective because not everybody's going to go out there every week and have 10 sacks. I mean, they kind of come in clunks just like the rest of it does, So just like turnovers. So the big thing is we emphasize it. We try to work and put ourselves in the most advantageous position from week to week in the situations that we get and just keep striving to get better at it. And then I know Anthony Nelson, I'm sure he'd love to have that fourth and one goal line play uh, back a little bit. But I thought about the fact that, man, I mean, it, we just don't ever really hear negative much about him out there when he's playing. That that was so rare to feel like it was a hearing someone say like, oh, you know, Anthony Nelson this. Because I feel like Coach Bowles especially always calls him the steady Eddie right. of the group. So other, other than that play, maybe tell me also just about Anthony Nelson and, and the con- the, contribu- the contributions he has when I feel like he is someone that sometimes doesn't get the notoriety. As people list the outside linebackers, sometimes he can get forgotten in that list, but he has been a guy that has been here for so long and contributed a lot. There's no doubt. I mean, again, like you were talking about Shaq, Anthony has a lot of experience within the system defensively. He's been there for a while. A lot of guys lean to him for advice. I mean, he's really helped out, like Chris Braswell, as he's worked through this offseason training camp and even now into camp, especially when he's out there. They all feel like they can ask Nelly anything at any point in time, and he's going to be able to give them the right answer. So, I mean, that's a credit to him and the way he prepares. It's a credit to him and the time that he's been studying you know, from a, or each opponent from week to week. And you can just tell he's one of those guys, when you talk about a leader in the room, he is one of those guys that lead in the room. And it's, like I said, his steady Eddie, he's going to be consistent, and guys can count on him. He's going to be accountable. It's a big deal. And what do you remember about Chris Braswell, tape from college maybe, as you guys were looking at drafting this guy? What stood out to you about his college days where you thought that he could fit well here? Well, I, I thought his power and explosion in the run game really showed up. I, I mean, he did quite a bit at the University of Alabama and Nick system defensively. So he's dropped, he's rushed, he's, you know, was able to play to run a certain way that we expect. And so I think the transition has been pretty good for him now i think from a technique standpoint and a fundamental standpoint there's been a lot of new things that he's had to add to his toolbox and from a rush standpoint but i i think he's grasped it pretty good and i think guys have rallied around him that know that we need him you know to bring him along pretty quick and i, I think he's grasped it i thought he actually rushed the best that he rushed you know yesterday I mean, he had a couple of hits on the quarterback yesterday. So I, I think it's coming. I, I think he'll continue to improve as we continue down his journey and look for him to get there fast. What are the biggest ways you feel like you've already seen him grow or come out of the shell of it? I, I, I think for him, when things are good and bad, he, he's mature enough that he is pretty steady. Hmm. And his reaction is he, he doesn't get on the pendulum of going up and down, up and down. Guys have, you know, taught him how, okay, how, all right, we're off on Tuesday, but you still got to get work done and just all the things that a rookie goes through. And I, I think he's grasped from their advice that, okay, this is how you have longevity in this league and this is how you go out and you produce on Sunday. So I, I think he's been a big 
you know, learner from them and listening to their advice on how to approach things. Just Yaya went through it last year. And they're all, you know, talking to him. Yeah, you know, everybody talks about the rookie wall and all those kind of things. So this is how we got to push through it. This is how we got to work through it. So I, I think he's learning a lot through the process, but he has been willing to listen and learn and go out and, and play fast. All right, we have one more segment coming up here on Buccaneers Total Access, brought to you by Advent Health with outside linebacker coach George Edwards. This is Buccaneers Radio. Welcome back into Buccaneers Total Access brought to you by Advent Health. I am joined by outside linebacker coach George Edwards. Um, so tell me about a couple other guys in your room. First of all, you had so many rookies last year. I'm sure that was fun for you. A whole bunch of new guys had no idea what they were doing. Every coach's dream. Um, but now I feel like, you know, guys like Jose Ramirez and Marquise Watts, um, they're really interesting to see, especially get some more work in the preseason. Let's start with Marquise. I mean, it goes from being a tryout player to getting on the 53. And I just feel like the the progression of that is so amazing that that story is not super common. So what did you see from him that made you guys say, yeah, this guy has earned a spot on the 53, even in this unconventional manner? Uh, a credit to Watts. I think, you know, like he came in here as a tryout during a rookie mini camp and really stood out. You could see his athleticism. You could see his bend and his rush. And uh, from that point on, I mean, it's the same thing. He came in he worked very dil diligently at everything that we asked him to do. And, you know, he had a good off season this past off season working, getting a lot more reps and you can see he was getting it. So seeing his jump from year one to year two, just with being comfortable with all the things we asked him to do has, uh, has, has been good. And I, I think he approached it. And we always tell young guys, you've got to be able to be good on special teams, be able to contribute on special teams and do that. And he's kind of done that and carved his niche that way as far as making this football team. But no, Watts is, has really come a long way. We're excited about where he's at right now and look for him to continue to grow. And then how about Jose Ramirez? Same thing. I know he was on the practice squad all last year, earned a spot on the 53 this year. And, um, you know, Tristan's mentioned what great looks Jose was able to give them on the practice squad last year. What have you seen from – what did you see from him last year, particularly on that practice squad and the way he was developing to then now feel like he earned that spot? A, a lot of the same process. I mean uh, – he, he came in last year, like you said, he put him on a practice squad. And the one thing he did day in and day out is he went out and gave those offensive guys a good look and he worked. And that's the thing we try to emphasize to those guys is that you're not just taking reps like a car. You're, you're out here improving your craft and working on those things from day to day. And he did that last year. And I think the work that he put in this all season was tremendous. I mean, you could just see how his whole uh, framework changed. And so, just looking for him to continue to grow and, you know, learn and work and those kind of things. It's going to be a blessing, I think, for him to just, you know, he'll get the benefits of the work that he's put into it. So I, I give him a lot of credit for going through the offseason and doing the things that he did to change his body type and just, you know, physically and athletically, all the things that he's added to his toolbox. I have to imagine also going against guys like Tristan, pretty helpful in your development. No doubt. When you're going against some of the best in the league. And um, what did you see about the way that your guys going against our offensive line in the offseason, in training camp, has helped them grow or things that you've seen them learn from going against them? I, I think, yeah, I mean, you always learn a lot from each other while you're out there as guys are working on their craft to improve, especially in a pass rush of just different moves and things to add to your toolbox. Uh, I, I, I think it's tremendous to get the opportunity to go, especially like you mentioned, Tristan. I mean, to see him and just how his pass sets are and how big he is and how athletic he is at the top of the rush and making us work at the top of the rush. So all of those things are very beneficial to, to them getting better from day to day. And how about for Tristan and Luke, both on that outside? I know we've been missing Luke the last couple of weeks, but um, what have you seen of going against them, especially the growth that Luke experienced you know, going to last year and then starting this year and, and the confidence he had. Yeah, I, I think that's the big thing. I, I, I think that confidence just grows through the experience that he's had. I know it's a change of scheme and, you know, a change of some of the things he's probably asked to do, but it, being able to adjust to different things from week to week is a part of this business, and he's done a tremendous job with it. And now looking ahead, we're talking to outside linebacker coach George Edwards. The Eagles game coming in coming in hot here. Um, feels like this is a team that we just keep playing over and over <laughs> again, despite them not even being a division opponent. Um, and I just th think about the fact that 
we are to them how the Lions were to us last week. If we're the ones that ended their season, knowing that they're going to come in, maybe want a little bit of revenge the way we did last week. Um, for you, when, when you guys have faced the Eagles in the past and then looking at it this year, what are the main things that stand out to you about their offense? Well, the big thing offensively that has changed, they changed the offensive coordinators this offseason. So Kellen Moore is their offensive coordinator. Uh, it just so happened was with him in Dallas and coached against him for years that he was in Dallas. So systematically, it's a little bit different. The philosophy of what they're trying to do offensively really hasn't changed that much. The head coach is still an offensive guy, and he still has certain things he likes to do in certain situations. So it's sort of a culmination of all of those things at the end of the day. So from just looking at him on tape that briefly that I've had some time to spend on him, I, I mean, it's a lot of first. I mean, I think Jalen is, is getting into the swing of what they're asking him to do from an, uh, from the different offenses perspective. And just, you know, it, it's changed there. So for us, I think, you know, we just got to prepare for what has changed and what's similar. I mean, there's a lot of carryover too. But it's about us really focusing on us as we get ready to get prepared for this game this week. And looking at a guy like Jalen Hurts and his running ability, how much more complicated does that make an outside linebacker's job where maybe you're a little less likely to be able to just feel like you can pin your ears back and go? Oh, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> That's the technical football <laughs> term for it. No, anytime you got a quarterback that can move in the pocket and still be able to complete the ball down the field, it, it really makes us have to you know, force ourselves to – don't rush too high. I mean, to make sure that we keep the pocket squeezed to where, you know, hopefully he can't step up too hard to drive into the drive throws. But yet, if you go past him, he can escape through the B gap up inside. I mean, unfortunately, we've, we've played three quarterbacks. We'll have been three quarterbacks when we get to him that have that ability to scramble. So we got to make sure we're disciplined in our rush lanes and, you know, make him have to step up and get pressure in his face. And, of course, we do focus a lot on pass rush for you guys disrupting the quarterback, but it's not like you're not involved in the run game for sure. So, uh, Saquon Barkley, what an addition for them. Tell me, uh, again, you've got a lot of familiarity being from that Cowboys background. <laughs> you, you just can't get away from this man. No. So, uh, tell me what it's like facing a guy like Saquon Barkley. Well, he's a, he's a very strong back, I mean, I, and he's really fast. I mean, uh, guys don't give him enough credit, I think, sometimes, just how powerful he is when he runs between the tackles and then the speed to be able to get out on the perimeter and then athleticism that he plays in, in open space. So he's a complete back all the way. So we'll have our hands full as far as, you know, making sure that we get our run fits and then making sure that we clean up tackling this week. And then also Dallas Goddard that they have who, God, this guy, 10 catches and 170 yards this last week. That's absurd for a tight end's numbers. Yeah. Uh, um, when it comes to tight ends that have that ability, how much does that affect you guys and, and what you're trying to do? Yeah, it does. I mean, it, it does whether we're in coverage or whether we're rushing or or just depends on the situation that we're in. But it, it does affect us, especially someone with his athleticism and, and space and those kind of things, keeping leverage on him and coverage. But then – also in the run game, you know, being able to set an edge and keep the edge of the defense up. What are the, the things that you feel like you most want to see out of your group this week, either based on just what your goals are for them all season or based off last week what happened and what you want to see in terms of a turnaround and know they put it behind them moving forward, what would tell you that they did that? I, I think the biggest thing is the control of the things that we can control, which is in the run game we need to set the edge on the defense, not go chasing things that we're not seeing. And then against the pass game, being disciplined in our pass rush as far as our lanes and being able to be able to keep the quarterback in and not let him out. And finally, maybe a couple keys to this game in particular of what you would say, all right, if we're able to do this and this as a defense overall, that's going to give us the best chance to win the game in terms of what we can control on defense. Well, I, I think, though, like Coach Bowles always says, I mean, the number one thing is controlling the run, stopping the run, and then being able to pin our ears back in passing situations. I mean, just starting on them today, I mean, I would say that that would be my mindset going in. Now, as we keep working through the week, I'm sure those goals here over the next 48 hours will become a lot more apparent. And then finally, your, your guys, what would you say is your big goal for them, maybe stat-wise? Is there something that you're wanting some of your top guys like Iyayana Joe to accomplish throughout the rest of the season that is something you're giving them to look at? Like I said, from week to week, I think you kind of set those goals going into game, depending on matchups and you know what type of offense you're playing. 
and then I just look for them to improve from day to day and from week to week, go out and be able to show those things on Sunday. And, you know, as we keep progressing through this, you just want to see us keep continuing to have success. Well, Coach, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to us on a, a week that I know you have a lot going on, so we really appreciate it. Anytime. Thanks. All right, and that's going to do it for us here on Buccaneers Total Access, brought to you by Advent Health. This is Buccaneers Radio.